Lalo has a question. Uh, MS Teams external access. Is there any way to allow certain users to communicate with certain external domains? For example, users at domain A.com and domain B.com and different users allow communication with different external users, for example, in domain C.com and domain D.com and block access to any other external domains. By default, I can only block or allow external domains globally for all users in my organization. Yes, Teams external access. Um, was that clear for everybody? It, it, domain A.com, domain B.com, domain C.com, and domain D.com. I think it's more about the, they only want to have one or two people to be able to do it, like bring in a, domain but the domain for only an individual whereas it's a it's a holistic but you can just say that individual can communicate yeah i mean there's there's a a few different ways of approaching this i mean there are you know um private channels and shared channels shared channels so depending on the mix that you have depending on whether they're federated, what level of access those other domain accounts have. Um, but if these are uh, you know, companies that you are regularly interacting, collaborating with, and have like a high level of trust between organizations, then you know, doing the shared channel could be an option for that. I think the question though is, is he just talking purely communication or communication and collaboration? Because when you've got chat, chats are, it's an on or an off for the whole organization. So if you're going, I want to be able to chat and it's only these individual peoples that can chat, then, you know, that's, that's a little different than, you know, you can turn on and include the domain, not have necessarily the chat side of things, but they can collaborate and then only certain, you know, SharePoint teams are externally enabled for that particular group of people to be able to communicate with the external party. So you've got to break it down in so many different levels when it comes to, well, what do you mean by external communication? What do you need to include and bundled up in communication, collaboration and, and which component? Yeah, I've certainly had this question asked quite a bit. And technically, in the Teams Admin Center, it is set by domain to either allow all or allow some or block, you know, block all. So depending on what, what route you're wanting to go down, you have those capabilities. So, Layla, you are correct on that. That is, by default, what you can and can't do. My thought on this, though, is we don't block people from communicating in Outlook. So I guess I take the, the stance of let's allow, if we allow people to communicate in email um, and we're not blocking them, let's just allow the same thing in Teams. Um, I'm kind of on that school of thought. Let's keep uh, uh, the ability for people to communicate um, open. Now, if we start to think about, okay, we're worried about things like files um, and maybe we have some sort of uh, governance or requirements around the risk of sharing files. I would then move into things like shared channels, where now that's the new capability with cross-tenant access settings. You can lock it down to only share with one person in that shared channel that's from another domain. So I think if, if we start thinking about what's the harm in, in allowing communication, I think the risk more companies are concerned with is really around files and, and information governance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's one other scenario. I mean, you think of like the, the VDR, the virtual data room scenarios, like if, like a great example is that you're you're going through a merger and acquisition. So you're, uh, your company is acquiring another company and maybe you have investors, maybe you have the, the acquiring company as their investors or, or, or directors or whatever that you have. And you need to, you want to be able to collaborate and you want to be able to connect, but you need to keep the lanes separate for the sharing of this intellectual property and contracts and financial information. You want to have technical discussions with some users at that domain, but you only want to share financial information with specific users on those the, the domain. I mean, so those are things, and there are third-party solutions that do that. It's a... Uh, uh, not quite uh, as robust with the native out-of-the-box 
features. But if you want to have that kind of granular control, because I agree, Michelle, with if you're going, we and we saw this mistake with SharePoint in the structuring of SharePoint, where we had end level and very complex permission structures yeah. and breaking inheritance, inheritance and doing th certain things and uh, you know, and, and just use the out of the box capability, uh, allow community management and and trust in the community to do the right things, set the guardrails in place, um, have rules around that, but then let people go and collaborate. But if it's a specific scenario like this mergers and acquisition scenario, I mean, there are specific solutions mm -hmm. that can do that kind of granular permission management. Exactly. Otherwise, man, I'm, I just I, I, all I know is that you know back in the day, managing SharePoint environments where I employed a, a contractor who did nothing but permissions management in SharePoint. That was his job, <laughs> and every day he filled his entire day with shifting things around. This was like an 1,800 person organization, and just that was it. That's all he did. It was a full time job. What an awful right. job. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we just see, you know, they start really locking it, then they're just going to send it out in another way. They'll go around you to do right. so much shadow yeah. IT. They'll just email it out. They can't do it this way. They'll find another way. So you actually end up with more risk than less risk, frankly. So right. write yeah, it I, up. I'd agree. Mm -hmm. And and it frankly, email is a threaded conversation. Teams is a chat-based threaded conversation. So allowing for you know, asynchronous communication or even synchronous uh, if you're in Teams. Uh, if you're allowing that in one location, I think you need to think about allowing it in all locations and not limit what people are and how people are working. Because when we look at uh, the different generations that are in the workforce, uh, it, it's leaning towards less email and more chat. So if you're thinking about putting in policy, you're going to really I think block people who naturally gravitate towards chat and um, you want to enable them, right? We really want to come to a place where all generations are comfortable and you give them all access and the same rules across the different products. If the issue is securing the sharing of sensitive information, you know, you can always go in and have a non Teams based SharePoint site with library and have that financial information and other sensitive content within a library and lock that down to specific users. And so they can share the link and those other individuals will not have access to that content. They won't find it within search. So there's different ways that you could do. I agree. I think, you know, maybe Lalo, you need to use something other than, you know, uh, allow communication. Like, I, I don't know what you mean by that, but mm -hmm. communication should be broad and open. And half then the put fun of, yeah. I'm sorry, I ever thought you were finished. Half the okay. fun of answering a question is trying to figure out what the question actually is. Yeah, what, what, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Every time we answer them, it's always the way. Hang on a second, I have questions. <laughs> yeah. yeah.